That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to a Rudolph the O-Line Leader edition of the Always Iris. Still on vacation, but the news doesn't stop, show. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks for having patience with me. I, I say it, I've said it on every episode I've done from vacation. I planned vacation when I did, figuring it'd be the slowest time of the year for Notre Dame news. After the season, before spring football should be the dead period, and then everything happens. So now we have more news. So I left the pool not to be a fool and to keep it cool and tell you what's going on. So strap it in, folks. Obviously, you can find the program on YouTube. Do it. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps me as well. Notifications on and you know why. That way you'll be alerted every time a new episode drops. You don't want to miss it. Twitter, search bar, always Irish rat. Always Irish Inc. Emails, always Irish at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want me. You can locate me. Call in line. 312-988-15. Tell always Irish all you heard and seen. Fighting Irish Wire every day, make it a part of your Notre Dame media routine, okay? So, here we are, folks. Looks like Notre Dame's close or does have some closure to the other remaining big question of the offensive equation, you know, the offensive coordinator. And we've already covered everything that's gone on with that to the point where it's excruciating to even think about or talk about. So we've covered that. Then we had the O-line position to talk about. Couple names floated. The old Georgia guy, uh, Chris Watt, doesn't really seem like he was ready for that. And that's no insult to him. It's just that the ideal track for Chris Watt would be to train under Harry another two to three years and then move into the role. In some ways, I look at that similar to Marcus Freeman, where I think the ideal situation may have been to be under Kelly another year or two, learn more about the, the whole Notre Dame and the head coach and then move into that. But time didn't allow for it. So the, the timeline got sped up. And if Marcus is going to become what I think he's going to become in this business, I'd rather be early than late and totally miss out on the guy. So that's how I look at that. Um, but it looks like it's going to be Joe Rudolph who has, Quite an interesting history that I think should appeal to Notre Dame fans in a lot of a lot of ways. So let's go over some of these notes. And again, forgive me for looking at the notes. I don't like doing that during a show, but I don't have my normal setup. I'm kind of winging it. So um, most recently, the Virginia Tech O-line coach run game coordinator. Um, here's the other part, though. That's most recent. But what I like is he was the O-line guy at Wisconsin when they were road grading people. And then if you go back in time as a Notre Dame guy, you'll remember when Pitt had a real, really good running game with Corey Connors and them guys. And he was a part of that as well. And I like that a lot. Those are some really good running games in places where – it's not five-star talent everywhere and whatever. You have athletes all over the board. Like Pitt's not that. Wisconsin's not that. So when you're able to accomplish a lot with what you have there that I know isn't elite top-level talent, that appeals to me a great deal. So I really do like that history. Um, the physicality of both of those good Wisconsin and Pitt running games should appeal to us a lot. It's right up the Notre Dame alley. So I love everything about that. I really do. Um, it's just, it's also nice to have some closure here. I Like we could tie a bow on the offensive coordinator stuff. Now the O-line stuff, kind of keep it moving. So I do like that, that we're kind of wrapping that up. Um, here's something else. This may matter to people. It may not. It matters to a guy like me. I saw the message that Rudolph put out to Virginia Tech um, saying goodbye, talking about being called there by God and all this stuff. Really classy message. Um, and it takes a lot for me to say that because I, I'm jaded enough where I see through a lot of BS and I see through all Notre Dame's BS because my radar on that's so magnified of 
following Notre Dame my whole life and now doing the media stuff I do, I could see right through Notre Dame's BS. This guy's message saying goodbye to Virginia Tech could not have been classier and come off to me more from the heart. And that matters to me too. It may not to you, but it matters to me as far as the kind of guy he is. And the way that he wrote the message, it's a good Notre Dame fit. Talking about being called here and I appreciate how I was treated and God called my family to Blacksburg and all that. Um, Really, really classy message. And, and that matters to somebody like me, lines up with the Notre Dame fit. Um, so I, I really do like that. And I just like that we have, we're going to have closure now. Here's something I want to mention that I think is relevant given the last few weeks in Notre Dame land. Some of the reporting on this earlier today, when I was floating around in the pool, drinking my, my Miller lights, some of the messaging on this is interesting. It's a little different than a few weeks ago. I started seeing tweets from Notre Dame media and other people saying it looks like it's going to be Joe Rudolph. But they they kind of said, barring any unforeseen uh, circumstances, you know, in the near future, Notre Dame's expected to hire this guy. And I, it stands out to me, and I'm not going to not mention that I noticed these sources are building in flexibility now so that if in the last minute it doesn't work out, we don't. It's not like, well, you said it was a done deal. They're adding in the clause of, Barring barring anything unforeseen in the next few hours, it looks like this is going to be the guy. I'm just saying I've noticed, and it's interesting to me that they're kind of adding in that uh, security blanket there um, after what we've been through the last few weeks. So maybe people are wisening up to not get the cart ahead of the horse in Notre Dame land with these hires. But it, that is very interesting and worth noting given the the last few weeks that that's all I'm going to say on that. Um, couple other notes, good teacher, <clears throat> strong recruiter, especially at Wisconsin. What did I want to say about this? Oh, this came from Kevin Sinclair, the Notre Dame writer. I like this. You'll like this. He tweeted, Joe Rudolph was involved in seven recruiting classes at Wisconsin. In six of the seven of those classes, the highest ranked player was an offensive lineman. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, and, and so that kind of gives you an idea of the quality of recruiting there. And um, I, I love that a lot. So interesting nugget from Kevin Sinclair. Wanted to make sure to give him a shout out uh, on reporting that. So, Again, he was involved in seven recruiting classes, and in six of those seven when he was at Wisconsin, the highest-ranked guy in the Wisconsin class was an O-line guy that was his guy. I like that a lot. Um, and so, good teacher, strong recruiter. He has play-calling experience, game-planning experience, run-game-coordinating experience. This is all really a good fit for where Notre Dame's at right now. This is a guy Parker can lean on. Think about it. If you if you panicked or didn't want to go through exposing yourself to bad media again and you panicked and you hired Watt, we would all support him because he's a Notre Dame guy. We all want to, want to see do well. But that's not a guy that Parker could lean on in any way. This is a guy who's older, seen more, and again, play calling experience, run game experience, game planning experience, O-line experience, good recruiter, good teacher. You line all that up with Marcus Freeman and then Parker's vision. And then you align that with the lineage Notre Dame has at offensive line already. And now you're off to the races. That's a good, comfortable start. I like that. I like that a lot. And the thing is, with tight end and O-line, Notre Dame's in a position where other schools are with quarterbacks and wide receivers where the proven elite lineage go into the NFL in those groups help whoever the coaches of those groups out because you already have that proven lineage of NFL success putting these guys in the league. That helps a lot. So now you're bringing this guy in 
that has this good experience at places I value it. Like Wisconsin and Pitt, you'd be like, oh, well, those aren't five-star guys. Yeah, that's why I like that I see he was able to do so much and produce and put guys in the league from places that aren't just five-star laden SEC land teams or whatever. This is a really good fit. I think this is a very good hire. And here's what maybe this could do. Maybe if enough people are impressed with this hire or like it for the reasons I do and find comfort in it for the reasons I do, maybe if enough people do that, it'll start melting some of the heat that came with all the offensive line cluster. Maybe it'll help melt some of those feelings away. As you can tell, it's still a hot button issue for me but maybe that'll start smoothing it over because I do think this is a very good hire across the board. Um, so I like this. I like the experience. Parker can lean on him. Um, he's done good things multiple different places. I just think it's a good hire. I think this is a really good hire. And I'm telling you the cherry on top is the class with which this guy left Virginia Tech, that stuff just matters to me in Notre Dame. And uh mm -hmm. Super classy, super polished, um, Very seems very genuine. That all lines up with Parker and Freeman. Um, so if this is the deal and nothing dumb happens in the 11th hour and, and whatever, good job. Really good job. And now we could tie a bow on all this on the offensive side. And we could all just kind of now we know who's on our team, who's on our side get in a bunker, go to work, come out, have a good spring in a really good fall. And then we go from there. So good hire. Uh, Joe Rudolph been around the block, seen a lot can help our young staff out. Uh, seems like a good fit and a good hire. Let me know what you guys think. And now I'm going to go have something else to drink later. <laughs>